Welcome back to this edition of The Heat. We're discussing social reforms in Saudi Arabia. Let's get straight back to our panel. Now, we're hearing that women are going to be allowed to have a driver's license from Sunday onwards, and we've been hearing about the good side of that so far. But we also noticed that there have been arrests recently by the government of people, men and women, who were advocates for women receiving driving licenses in Saudi Arabia. What do you make of that? Uh, Rafia, you first of all. Um, you know, I, I think that um, it's a troubling thing. And to me, as an outsider, it's a little bit of an inexplicable move because why would you mar such a victory uh, with uh, the arrests of the people who are most enthused about it? Um, so, so I'm not sure I understand why this spate of arrests has taken place. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm hopeful that, you know, it's not yet Sunday. So I'm hopeful that perhaps they too will be released um, as part of the end of the driving ban. And, uh, you know, and, and this won't mar the victory that Saudi women uh, so, so deserve. Um, you know, I mean, at the same time, uh, I'm aware of the complications in uh, implementing empowerment reforms in the Muslim world. Um, I think the biggest burden uh, that faces anybody, uh, any, you know, whether it's a prince or it's a government that's implementing uh, pro-women reforms is that they get accused of being uh, Western or ally to Western interests or discredited in that way because of the colonial past and the histories of intervention in most of these uh, most of these countries and so um, you know I'm I mean, I, I understand that that is the challenge before uh, Saudis who are also implementing these reforms, that they have to present them as authentically Saudi and not because they've been influenced by this or that uh, uh, external force. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I really have a lot of hope that all the activists that have been imprisoned in recent days will be released prior to Sunday, and that they too will get to celebrate this important victory. Reem, isn't there a danger that this could rather taint what happens on Sunday if people who've been advocating for this have recently been arrested and some are still in jail? Well, it can cer certainly mar uh, from an international perspective, uh, just like uh, she said from... Uh, Sorry, Rafi um, said from a uh, an outsider perspective, definitely uh, the huge win and and the celebration that's going to happen on Sunday. Um, but to be honest, um, these people, number one, they do not represent uh, a huge sector of society. They are individuals. Um, they may have done something um, that we are not aware of from a security standpoint. Um, th yes. There is a certain uh, uh, part of, of transparency that we need from the Ministry of uh, Exterior or Interior to tell us what, uh, why were they um, uh, uh, detained at the first place. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, this is a security issue, and uh, security is, is the number one priority, especially when it comes to such reforms. Maha, there was an article in the New York Times recently that said the royal family in Saudi Arabia see this as a gift to the people from them rather than the result of any kind of protest, any kind of climb down by the authorities in Saudi Arabia. What do you make of that? I don't think that is, uh, that is true. Um, the issue of driving had been uh, discussed in the uh, Shura Council, it was approved by the Shura Council, which is like the parliament, which represents the views of the people. Um, it was approved by the uh, Council of Ministers, and, and then the decision was uh, made. Um, don't forget that uh, the issue of driving, of women driving, has been uh, discussed and debated uh, in the public, in the media, for, for years. And there has been many uh, women and men, men campaigners for women's rights uh, to, to drive. So um, the fact that uh, the decision was finally made 
it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a collective, it's a, it's a partnership between the government and the society. It's a collective, it's a, it's a decision that is supported uh, by the authorities as well as by the society. And from what we have noticed uh, throughout the past uh, months uh, leading up to, uh, to Sunday, is that there has been a lot of uh, support from from officials, whether it's the Ministry of Interior, whether it's uh, from uh, the uh, um, uh, traffic uh, department, whether uh, in the media, there's lots of, uh, of campaigns uh, uh, raising awareness, encouraging women, supporting women. Uh, and many of the women who, ha who have spoken before about uh, women driving w uh, have received their driver's license and will be among the first on the streets to, to drive. Mm. So um, it's, uh, it's really a very, uh, very um, uh, social uh, celebration uh, throughout the country. And it's not something as, had, as, as you said. I want to come to Rafia in just a second, but Reem, First of all, briefly, if you would, do you think that there will be a real economic benefit to Saudi Arabia because of the lifting of the driving ban, and maybe if not just the lifting of the driving ban, but the other reforms that you hope to see in the future? Yes, absolutely. Just with the driving ban lifted, we're going to see a return of $33 billion. Uh, in the next few years with uh, an output, an economical output that reaches 90 billion by 2030. That's huge, that's massive, that comes back to the Saudi Arabian economy. Uh, we are seeing diversification in multiple sectors and uh, removing the ban is, is contributing, uh, contributing to that uh, on a massive scale. But Rafia, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has said that Saudi Arabia is in danger of running out of money in the future. Do you suspect that there is more to this than meets the eye? Well, I mean, I hope there is more to this than meets the eye. Um, I mean, you know, as, as, my, as the other panelists have said, um, there, there are economic imperatives, there are social imperatives, uh, there are moral imperatives to provide equality to women, to uh, bring them into the public sphere and the economic sphere, and hopefully the political sphere. Um, so, I mean, I hope that, you know, like you, you mentioned, the IMF, but yes, in general, the Saudi economy is being completely reprogrammed. Now, of course, um, you know, as a feminist, I worry that in that reprogramming, uh, women should not just, I mean, this is a symbolic move, as the other panelists said, but it shouldn't stop at at women being a symbol, that they should be given uh, more robust reforms. And so, you know, a lot of the things that you mentioned in terms of the guardianship laws, in terms of inheritance, um, in, in many other sectors, uh, there are crucial reforms that have to be made that might not be as visible as uh, ending the driving ban, but uh, they provide women with very, very substantive achievements and substantive means by which uh, they can participate in the workforce and um, in, in, in the reprogramming of the Saudi economy. So, I mean, I, as a Muslim feminist, I guess I, I hope that uh, these reforms are the beginning and that Saudi Arabia can be a model for other Muslim countries in that it can promote interpretations of the Sharia, which uh, reveal and which implement the equality of women, that permit women to make decisions about their own life, whether it's uh, driving or getting a divorce or going abroad for okay. studying or for tourism. So yes. Maha, do you think that the Crown Prince will run into difficulties with the ultra-conservatives in the country, people who really are on the far right? of the political situation in Saudi. Is that going to be a problem going forward? Um, it's true that in the past the ultra-conservative had more say in what goes on um, in terms of social and religious uh, affairs, particularly whatever, uh, things concerning uh, women. But uh, I think uh, one of the achievements uh, that are not um, so visible, as, as Rafia said, is this uh, uh, social uh, change 
and uh, uh, dialogue among the different uh, sectors in society, whether those are the ultra-conservative or uh, conservative or what might be considered liberal, um, there's more now of channels of communications and, and discussion about issues where now um, it seems like decisions are more reached in, in a, in a uh, more, um, uh, not necessarily compromise, but more of, a, of an understanding and, uh, and acceptance by, by everyone. So I think well, that uh, we need more of this, of this open dialogue. Well, finally, let's just go through all three of you. Do you think that the Crown Prince is more open to Western culture? And do you think there's a danger that if you build a cult of personality around one man, then things could go wrong in the future? What do you think about that? Maha first, just briefly. Um, no, first, uh, you know, Crown Prince is, is Saudi. He was born and raised and educated here, so he is very much a representative of Saudi society and Saudi culture and the Islamic religion. Um, the whole world now is influenced by, by different cultures, different uh, ideas, including Western ideas. That okay. doesn't mean that it is leaning towards one side or another. Reem He's doing the legwork all by himself and with a delegation, huge delegation behind him and the youth of Saudi Arabia behind him. I mean, he just went to the United States, to Asia. He just came back from Russia. Uh, he's doing the legwork. Yes, he certainly has been on a just world tour. Just to represent tour. Saudi Arabia. No question about that. Rafia, finally, what do you think about the future here? This is a big day coming up on well, Sunday. The world is going to be watching. Well, I think it's important to remember that the precedent for women being empowered doesn't come from the West necessarily. That in itself is a very Western view. There are plenty of very, very strong empowered women in uh, Islamic history and in Saudi history in particular, women who lived all the way from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, all until, uh, I'm sure, right this moment. And so, uh, you know, I don't think that this is something Western. This is something, as you know, as the panelists said, that's been, uh, that's been campaigned for that's been worked for for a long time and he is just uh, uh, you know he is the the vehicle via which an empowered Muslim woman uh, is going to be able to participate in a way that she hasn't before Rafia Reem and Maha thank you all very much indeed for joining us on the program today thank you